Hi there. Welcome to our introduction to the Difference Inclusive Leadership course. The presentation comes in three parts with timestamps below. In the first section, I introduce the difference and outline how our three core principles of whole school inclusion underpin the Inclusive Leadership course, supporting leaders to improve inclusion outcomes in their schools. In the second section, Paul Johnson, a head teacher from Churchill College in Walls End, North Tyneside, outlines key learning he took from the course and shares some examples of implementation and impacts in his school. And in the final section, a group of head teachers share some of the challenges they are experiencing, and we discuss how the Inclusive Leadership course could support their response. You might want to watch the whole presentation in order, or just focus in on one of the sections. If you'd like more information, or have further questions, please email me or go to our website. Enjoy. Amazing. Okay. And um, great. So, um, I, yeah, my name's Sean. I'm Sean Brown. I'm the Programs Director at The Difference. I was a teacher in mainstream and a leader for uh, 10 years. Then I moved to Tottenham's Pupil Referral Unit and I was a senior leader there for 10 years. And then I went back to um, mainstream and I was the deputy head in mainstream for five years. Most of that time I was leading inclusion and I have always been particularly interested in making specialist practice more meaningful and accessible to all, um, all school staff. Um, in terms of um, the difference, um, we uh, were founded in 2018 by our CEO Kieran, Kieran Gill, um, after she had completed a report called Making a Difference with the IPPR that looked at the disproportionate um, impact of exclusion. Um, and now in 2023, we're a national education charity, uh, got an incredible team of 16 people leading um, three um, clear strands of work. Um, we've got programmes and PD strands. Um, where we've worked with um, just over 300 school leaders now on our two um, core programmes. Um, they are the Difference Leadership Programme, um, where we've taken 65 leaders from mainstream, they've become Difference Leaders in AP and PRUs across the country, and then we've supported them to go back to leadership positions in mainstream. Um, and then our um, inclusive leadership course, which is what we're more here to focus on today, we've had we've worked with over 250 mainstream leaders over the last four years um, on the inclusive leadership course, developing their personal expertise, but also then supporting them to lead, lead improved outcomes in their schools. Our other two strands, um, we have a practice research team who are capturing and evaluating what's working for those leaders on our programmes and sharing those findings. Um, and then a policy engagement team who are bringing the programme learning and the research findings to the DFE and Ofsted and LAs and, and, and MATS to inform um, change to the education landscape. And one thread that runs through all of these strands um, has been our interest in school exclusion. And I'm going to start just by giving a, a, a sense of um, where we've got to in our thinking about exclusion, in particular, how we are supporting school leaders to engage um, with it um, with it positively. Um, so if we just begin by thinking about what we do and don't know about exclusion, I mean, the answer is in some ways a lot, in some ways not a lot. So from reports like the Making the Difference Report, we know that exclusion disproportionately impacts the most vulnerable and disadvantaged students. But actually the data for that is drawn roughly from 5,000 PXs every year because that's currently the only data set that we can disaggregate in that way. And to that end, I think it's really important that we clarify um, what we mean at the difference when we're talking about exclusion, because often when we see reference to it in the data, it's likely to be focusing on PX that pertains to the most challenging behaviours, poorest subsequent life outcomes, and because we've got this full um, data set. But actually, I think it's much more useful for us to think about and recognise that exclusions actually exist on a continuum that runs from PX through managed moves and time in AP, um, suspension, internal exclusions, detention, standing outside of the classroom, losing your social time. And um, none of these types of exclusion, in my view, is in, are, are intrinsically wrong at any level. In, and in fact, they're often very appropriate, very useful responses to challenging behaviours. Um, 
And although it's understandable that we're very focused at the top end of that continuum sometimes, I think that presents a couple of challenges. Um, in some areas, we're seeing the threat from that focus drive a move from PX and suspensions to less visible and actually therefore less accountable managed moves and internal exclusion. And also that top end focus, I think, reduces um, our engagement in opportunities for earlier recognition and response. And it's essential that we keep the whole continuum in view because actually the research tells us that exclusion in every single one of its forms is a window on vulnerability and disadvantage. And that's especially true at the lower end where exclusion might be the only indicator of unseen or emerging needs. Um, we might also consider a parallel um, continuum of self-exclusion um, that runs right the way through from elective home ed and PA and down towards kind of truancy uh, and lateness for lessons. And again, disproportionately impacting the most vulnerable and acting as a really valuable window on unseen and emerging needs. And I think if we um, can agree that all of those forms of exclusion have got a role to play in responding to challenging behaviour, then actually productive engagement with exclusion and that actually improves inclusion requires us to shift um, the focus of our response towards promoting practice that reduces escalation up the continuum during challenge and in particular in, improves the success of reintegration from every level of the continuum. Um, and for us on the programme, um, and particularly inclusive leadership course, we're really interested in visibility of the whole continuum as being an essential part of evaluating and improving that practice that is um, going to drive uh, the changes that we want to see. Um, at the difference um, and through the inclusive leadership course, we've got three principles of whole school inclusion that underpin all of the work that we do. And the first of those principles is that all children have learning, well-being and safeguarding needs. So we have a framework for inclusion that is built up from a universal foundation that recognises the needs of every student. And so we don't see inclusion as just the peripheral support that we offer to a minority of students whose needs we know. Um, and instead, we're also challenging what I think is a quite a problematic notion. Uh, that normal sorry. Um, no, oh, hang on. And um, that's fine. It's, just, it's not. It's not actually going on. I was just after a fire. If you uh, could, along. if you so, could mute uh, yourself, Graham, that would be great. Yeah, it's fine. Speaking to the uh, it's not the actual alarm, but uh, you have to go at some point. Sorry, carry on, Sean. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And um, so we um, we introduced this framework in session one, and it's the focus for our first assignment. And leaders find it really, really valuable as a way to review their school inclusion offer, and particularly to identify gaps in their universal offer for all students, but also to think about how they distinguish between the offer for students whose needs are known and those students who have emerging needs. Our second principle is that relationships are integral to learning. So no one, adult or child, can process or sequence or recall, essentially learn, unless they feel safe. Dysregulated behaviours of everyone, all adults and children, are rooted in unsafe experiences and Developing the relational practice of staff means that we can initiate and grow and particularly repair relationships that reduces dysregulation and improves feelings of safety for students, but also for staff that create an environment for focused classroom learning. And as part of that, um, through our leadership programmes like the Inclusive Leadership Course, we introduce seven key relational practices and support their introduction in schools. And we primarily do this um, by developing the personal expertise of the leaders on the course so that they can go back and recognise the specific practices um, and what they could do for their school and where they could actually work. Um, and then make them accessible through their professional development to their staff. And first and foremost, before that can happen, they have to actually be meaningful to um, those, those, those leaders.
The third principle is that leading practice and system development is key to whole school inclusion. So through our practice and systems framework, we support leaders to distinguish really clearly between practice, which is the craft of our live interactions, and systems that are the steps that are built around those interactions. Um, in, in short, there is, I think, a misplaced belief in education potentially, but, but more widely as well, that systems drive outcomes. And as such, that system change is therefore a quick fix to improving outcomes. However, I would argue that no matter how simple or complex, how clear or coherent, how robust or well orchestrated um, our systems are, actually systems only achieve their desired outcome through um, the interactions, um, the practice that um, sit between those system steps. And understanding that it's real daily interactions which drive outcomes like exclusions and connecting them then to the current staff practice and school systems enables leaders to identify the new practice that would improve those interactions and, and also their ability to build systems which promote that practice and ultimately reduce um, outcomes like exclusions. And so in the course, in the inclusive leadership course, across the year, leaders focus on one particular outcome that they want to improve for a priority group of students. And ideally, it's one of the outcomes from lower down on the exclusions continuums. And then they test their learning across the year against changes that they make and lead in key interactions with these students. And that then provides them with a foundation for scaling the professional development afterwards and therefore the reach of their learning from the course in um, subsequent years. Um, so, yeah, that's the, um, I guess, some of the founding kind of uh, frameworks and tools that underpin the course. The Inclusive Leadership course is a one year, six full day course in person. It's for head teachers, deputy head teachers and assistant head teachers from primary and secondary um, who want to improve key outcomes like exclusions, attendance, parental engagement, peer on peer abuse. Um, for the leaders on the course, it's a blend of personal practice expertise development combined with those strategic tools and frameworks, and it enables them to take that expertise back to their, their own school and apply that learning and those frameworks to better understand priority outcomes that they want to improve. Um, and in particular, the course supports them to identify then and plan the support and the professional development that their staff need as part of that improvement journey. Um, I think we all know that there is no magic beans, quick fix to complex and contextual problems like exclusion. So we don't deliver this course in a directive way. Um, we're not just providing some information and, and a set of slides and say, go and do this in your school. Instead, we're challenging leaders to get under the hood of their own setting and developing their own agency to diagnose the approaches that are actually going to achieve improvement in their own schools um, and actually making choices from what we deliver as to what is most relevant to the work that they um, are working on, what they're kind of prioritising in their school. And we've worked now with just over 300 leaders um, on the course uh, across 50 mats, across 60 LAs, and we've had some really significant impacts um, from leaders in reducing exclusions, improving de-escalation from staff, and in particular from their ability to take what they have learned, which ha for which there's no IP. So whatever you get delivered, you get given to you as a leader in your school, and you can use that to then start developing your CPD. And that makes quite a big difference. So lots of some leaders come and they've got loads to learn and lots of what they get is really new and that's great for them. Some leaders come and they come with a lot of expertise already, but what they're getting in particular is a ways of framing and articulating things that they personally um, really understand. But what they want to be able to do is now start to develop and share this in a way that's meaningful and accessible to all their staff so they can build um, practice development across the school. And you can see from the slide 
um, what's um, what's in the six sessions. Um, probably worth emphasising, every session comes with an assignment, and that assignment is specifically designed to be taken back to the school to engage the wider leadership team and um, staff in the school so that learning is not just held by that leader on the course but is actually something that is coming from them and is being um, developed and, 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 and cascaded out um, and then leaders bring those assignments back and they have this amazing opportunity to share and reflect in a whole room of leaders from very different sorts of schools and contexts and test what they're doing and understand um, what others are doing. Um, that's actually, I think, one of the greatest strengths of the course is just the diversity in the room and what that brings to the, 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 the add, adds to the kind of uh, the, the learning. Um, in terms of um, what's next, I'm going to stop um, sharing and then um, you might have some questions.